Hey there, welcome or welcome back. My name is Emily or at Mhughes Art. So it is officially spooky season, it's October, and I don't know where the time has gone because as I'm recording this voiceover, we're already more than halfway through October, which is wild. But I wanted to share with you the paintings I did in the first week of October for what most people know as Inktober, but I will just say Arttober because I didn't actually follow the prompts from Inktober. I ended up following prompts from a bunch of different artist created prompt lists from Instagram. I will have them all linked down below. So I didn't record the first day of the week, day one, which was the prompt rabbit for Mosstober and two little fellas for Badtober. So yeah, I'm sorry I didn't film day one, but when I painted that painting, I wasn't even entirely sure that it was going to work out or I was going to continue with this challenge. I did however film day two, which was Forgotten Dagger for Mosstober. I didn't really have time for this challenge, I'm gonna be honest, but I decided that I would do it anyways, and I would do it in a very chill, no pressure sort of way. So no pressure to do all of the days, to take as many breaks as I want, and most importantly to just have fun. I was really excited about this one because it's a subject that I don't know if I would have painted if it wasn't for this prompt. It was a bit scary for me because I had this image in my mind that I wanted to paint and of course no perfect reference for that image. And as of late, I have very much been a study artist. I do lots of studies from references. I do make stylistic changes, but I don't create entire scenes on my own. Not that this painting is really an entire scene, but baby steps. And I'm totally happy with being more of a study artist. I think it's one of the reasons I've been able to progress my skills in a way that I've been happy with recently. Maybe I'll talk a little bit more about this topic in a later video because I think there's a lot to say there. But for now, let's talk about this painting. I wanted to paint a dagger sitting in some overgrown grass, a beautiful but damaged dagger. I found a few references of daggers and swords that I sort of combined for this one, but the hilt was entirely from my head, and I think that does show. Uh, it does come together a little bit better in the end, but I didn't really have an understanding of what materials that part was made of, so it ended up being very ambiguous. I also didn't follow a reference for the grass, and I don't really paint a lot of grass, I'm gonna be honest. Um, I didn't know what approach to take, but I knew I wanted it to be very stylized with very big shapes. I didn't want to get carried away with each individual blade of grass because I wanted the focus to be on the dagger, but I did want it to look like the dagger was sitting in some tall, overgrown grass. I had both Lord of the Rings and The Legend of Zelda in the back of my mind when I was painting this, and I actually got a comment from someone on Instagram who said this reminded them of a game they played and loved as a kid, but they could never find the name of it since, and I thought that was really cool. So if any of you guys have an idea of what that game could have been, let me know and I will pass it along. I was happy with how the layers of green ended up giving the grass a lot of depth, and it was really fun giving the piece a rugged but stylized border. I was happy I went in that direction.
Okay, I'd like to take a quick moment to thank today's sponsor, which is Atlas Coffee Club. Atlas Coffee Club is a coffee subscription service that curates the top 1% of the world's best coffee. Each month, subscribers receive a single origin 100% Arabica coffee from a new country, roasted and ground to your preference and delivered freshly to your door. You can also feel good about what you are drinking because Atlas Coffee Club pays above fair trade prices for all of their coffee with a focus on sustainability, the impacts of their products, and local farming practices. I was immediately struck by how beautiful their bags of coffee are, and I love that they include a postcard from the country and an info card with the country's history, the tasting notes of the beans, and all of the info about what makes that coffee unique. So I thought we could try some coffee together. I haven't tried this one yet. This one's from Guatemala. This smells really good. It kind of smells like toasted sugar. really good. It's delicious. It's toasty. It's chocolatey. Perfect for a fall day like today. So if you're interested in trying Atlas Coffee Club for yourself, then you can use the code Emily Hughes for 50% off on your first bag of coffee. You can also go to atlascoffeeclub.com slash Emily Hughes as well. Put it there <laughs> and it'll be in the description box. And let's get back into the video. Okay, on to day three, which was citrus from Megtober and sweet from Peachtober. I wanted to do a more simple subject for day three so that it would feel a little bit like a rest day. So I did a little still life of an orange and I really had fun playing with some soft edges and adding pops of color and keeping things really loose but still describing the forms. And unfortunately, the battery in my camera did die and I didn't notice because I was so in the flow state and I missed like the meat and potatoes of this painting, which is so incredibly annoying, but I thought I would include it anyways because the foundation was there. But we still have two more paintings of the week and I promise I filmed them in their entirety. And I think you should stick around because I was happy with how they both turned out. And the last one is actually my favorite. So I took day four off and for day five, I did the prompt haunts uh, for Badtober, which of course is a horse, but just in a silly, goofy way. So I did a couple sketches of horses. I wasn't sure if I wanted to focus in on the head of the horse or do a full body painting. And I ended up going with the full body painting, mostly just because I've never painted a horse and I thought there was a lot of fun to be had there. I chose a reference with beautiful lighting I did a underpainting wash of coral red and I was really hoping this would peek through in certain areas to give the painting a little more life and a little bit of a glow and I think it did work. The vibrant color did make it a little bit difficult to get the proper values in the first few layers so it was a little bit of a struggle but it did come together.
I wanted this painting to be super super loose and have the sense of movement of the running horse so I made the background very soft and ambiguous and I made the foreground a little bit higher in chroma so that it would give a sense of depth. Okay, so once again I took day 6 off and I came back on day 7 to do the prompt pumpkin for Chilltober. I was really excited about this one because it was the first Halloween-y type painting and it just really got me in the spirit, I guess. This ended up being my favorite painting of the month so far. It's a little black cat in one of those old trick-or-treating pumpkin buckets and I just thought it was so cute. The reference is definitely a old flash photography camera and I just love the look that those photographs have. The very intense lights and darks but also the lack of details in certain areas. I actually spent the final year of my undergrad doing oil paintings from my childhood photos. Most of them were Polaroids and they looked a lot like this. I really liked the harsh drop shadow behind the cat and the pumpkin.
and to add a little extra pizzazz, I painted some confetti and I had fun placing them around the composition and I liked how it felt like they were coming out of the photograph. Okay, so that is it for this video. Thank you so much for joining me. I would love to know which of the day's paintings is your favorite. And I'd also love to know if you are taking part in any Arttober challenges. I want to say a big thank you once again to Atlas Coffee Club for supporting my channel. And also a big thank you to my channel members. Your support is so appreciated. If you want to become a member, you can hit the join button down below. And I will see you all very, very soon with another video. Bye-bye.